But first I want to talk about Blackberry, what's going on, why we need to do the things we do, and why Blackberry can be so difficult. All right, the first thing I want to mention are these plots behind me were sprayed in November of 2009, okay? Three years ago, essentially. So that was a long time ago. I mentioned those things for a couple of reasons. Number one, blackberry is a perennial, okay? So it, it grows fairly slow, it dies fairly slow. So don't get too concerned or too animated about the fact that you spray it and then you think you've got a control, all right? Because I'll have people call me and say, I sprayed it, I got 100% control. Well, how long, how long ago did you spray? A month ago. That's way too early to determine if you've got any success, okay? It's gonna take these plants about a year to decide sometimes if they're gonna grow back because what you see out here is a perennial plant. That means there is a very large rootstock underneath the ground and there are buds all over that rootstock. And if you don't kill every one of those buds, it is gonna sprout back and make a new plant, okay? So we've gotta get enough herbicide in the plant and move down to kill all of those buds. And if you get just a little bit of herbicide in it, it may delay how long that new plant comes out, but it will recover and come back. So you need to wait about a year before you know if you've had true success or not. The second thing that's important, as I said, these were sprayed in November, all right? Again, being that this is a perennial, this plant thinks a little different than other plants, all right? What this thing does is in the spring, it comes out of winter, and it starts mobilizing and using all of that energy that it has stored in that big root system to push up and grow a new plant, okay? So, if I make my herbicide application in the spring, all the energy is moving from the bottom of the plant to the top, where's my herbicide gonna go? It's gonna stay in the top of the plant. That's exactly right. And that's not where I need it. Top kill is not what I'm looking for. I've got to control that big root stock. But after a little while, after about midsummer, this plant switches over. After it flowers and drops fruit, that's, that's basically its goal for the year, is to flower and make fruit. After that, it then takes the rest of the season and starts collecting all of this sunlight energy and it's pushing it back underground, refilling that root stock and growing a larger root system for next year. So, if I make my application in late summer through fall, where's my herbicide gonna go? It's gonna move right down into the root stock because that's where everything is moving and that's the time I wanna make the application. So, the fact that these treatments were put out in November is a good timing as long as we still have good weather and the plants are actively growing right now we've got good sunlight we've got good moisture right now would be a perfect time to make a blackberry application now a lot of us want to apply in the spring so what does that look like well it depends on what you're using okay you see on that far end down there we had pasture garden remedy put out then you have Tellar, you have Chaparral, which basically Chaparral is uh, Metsulfuron and Milestone. Now Metsulfuron, that's the active ingredient of the old Ally or Cimarron type products. Okay, It's the Metsulfuron that's doing all the work, it's not the Milestone. And then you go down there and you've got Chaparral plus 2,4-D. Okay, so what do we see? Let's start down here with Remedy and Pasture Garden. Remedy and Pasture Guard, great herbicides, okay? Very broad spectrum, kill a lot of weeds, good on dog fennel, good on a lot of other things too. But what we will often see is when we make the, the, the applications of those products is they work very fast. How many of you have sprayed Remedy and then gone out and seen the leaves on that plant totally brown a week later? That's what they do, and I like it. I like going out there and going, whoo, look at what we did. We just, we burned them up, all right? That you get that instant satisfaction 
from those products. But remember, we've got 20 times more plant underneath the ground. I've got to get the herbicide into that leaf, out of the leaf, and down into the roots where it's doing its work. If I'm killing that leaf in four or five days, is that enough time for all of my herbicide to move out and into the plant? I don't know. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, and generally it's not, okay? So the, we get that good gratification out of the triclopyr products because they're so fast, but sometimes they can be too fast. Now, you complicate that by making the application in the spring. Again, everything's moving from the bottom of the plant to the top. Moving herbicide out of that leaf is even slower in the spring. So generally, we see less control with Remedy and Pasture Guard from a spring application. They are much better, much more consistent in the fall. But even in the fall, generally by and large I'm gonna say 60 to 70 percent control okay have I gotten a hundred percent control before absolutely but not a lot of times okay so very good broad spectrum kill a lot of weeds and kill them fast but if you are going to be using the triclopyr products remedy and pasture guard and others on blackberry prepare to spray twice what I usually do is I will choose Remedy. I'll put out a pint in the fall, follow that with another pint the next summer. Go a pint and a pint. Now, one thing that's also important, you don't want to be mowing these plants before you make your application. Because if I take all of that top growth off, it's going to regrow, right? Where's my energy coming from to make it regrow? Down below. So if I mow it off for several months after that, it is pushing energy out of the rootstock to regrow that plant, and we don't get a lot of movement underneath the ground where I really need it, okay? So now let's move over into Tellar, the Metsulfuron products. Okay, Tellar, good herbicide, fairly good on Blackberry. You can see not as good as chaparral here as metsulfuron but pretty good however tellar's got a couple of a couple of good things and a couple of bad things one of the really good things about tellar is that it is slow very slow you will spray tellar you will not know you've even applied it for about four weeks then over the next four to, you know, between four and eight weeks, that plant will turn yellow and then progressively turn brown. I like that because I'm not injuring those leaves. Those leaves are staying active. They're still doing their job. Meanwhile, the herbicide is moving into the plant, killing the plant, and the plant doesn't even know it's dying. That's good. The other good thing about Tellar is it is totally safe on bahia grass. That's really good too. All right, so that's two good things about Tellar. Now, with every good thing comes a bad thing. Tellar is going, at this rate, you got to go to top end rate. You need to go about an ounce per acre to get the activity that you need. And to get to a rate that high, it's going to cost about $20. Is that still right, Jerry? About in that range? The other thing is Tellar is not going to control a bunch of other weeds. Okay, if you've got dog fennel, if you've got goldenrod and a bunch of other things, soda apple, you're going to miss them. Okay, it is very specific. It controls blackberry, it controls pigweeds or careless weeds, and not a terrible amount of other things. Okay, it's a much more narrow herbicide, but very safe on your grass, very good on blackberry. Now let's talk about metsulfuron. This is the pick of the litter here. This is really, really good. What's our biggest drawback on metsulfuron? Cimarron. Bahia grass sensitivity, okay? Now, how many of you have ever flat killed Bahia grass, mature Bahia grass with metsulfuron? Raise your hand. Me either, all right? What you will often see, if you don't time it exactly right, there's a fairly narrow window of timing. 
If you apply it late in the year, what you're going to see is that plant is going to turn yellow. The bahia grass will turn yellow. It'll start turning brown, and then it'll start coming back. And generally, it'll all come back. But you are going to yellow it out, and you're going to lose the grazing. You can minimize that by what we see on the very end. If you add in a pint to a quart of 2,4-D, 2,4-D really reduces the activity of metsulfuron on bahia grass. Doesn't take it away. It's still going to turn yellow and brown, but it just it comes back much quicker. So we can use a straight metsulfuron product, a Cimarron product. They're very cheap. They're highly effective. The number of misses I have had with blackberry with metsulfuron are almost zero. It just never misses blackberry. And it is very cheap, highly effective. But we have the bahia grass sensitivity issues that we have to deal with in one way or another. Okay? So I wish I had a silver bullet for you, but we've got three options. We can use a triclopyr product like Remedy or Pasture Guard, but you need to prepare to apply twice, and you have to start in the fall. We can go to a, a Telar material. Very good, very effective. High price, though. Total behavior grass safety, but a high price. Or we can go a Chaparral, Metsulfuron, Cimarron type product. A lot cheaper. But we have very effective, highly effective, the most effective, but bahia grass sensitivity is the concern. So those are the three things you've got to think about and try to work through when you're developing a blackberry control program. Now, if I'm in an area that is slammed up solid blackberry, then I would just use metsulfuron because you don't have that much grass anyway. If you're in an area where you've got a mixed-in grass stand, well, then one of these down here may be a better option.